Good evening, and welcome to St. Elizabeth. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our presider is our pastor, Father Roger. His intention is Mary Connor. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 698, Song of Mary, number 698. Good evening, everyone. And to those who are praying with us on our social media platforms, we welcome you to the solemnity in which we honor Mary, the mother of God and Jesus and of the church under a very, very special and unique title. You indeed are all welcome this evening. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son. Grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, 
and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because they became, she became the mother of all living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory we who first hoped in Christ, the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for welcoming me to the church as well. It's good that we talk to each other when I'm up here and you're there. So good evening. Very nice. We have actually young children in the church, so we want to teach them to be polite and be respectful and to greet each other when an offer is given to, to return that. So how beautiful it is to be here. Now we know this time of year that there are illnesses going around and viruses and people have flus and different things like that. But on the news cycles, I heard that there is a virus that is going around that you have to be very, very careful of. Because if you catch this virus, what it does, it affects your eyes. So you have to be very careful. If you get this virus, if you're infected with this virus, you're going to see Christmas trees where there are no Christmas trees. Any of you have that virus? Do you see Christmas trees? I don't see any Christmas trees. Well, we know there are trees here, right guys? And young lady, we do know that. But we're going to ignore those Christmas trees for right now. But they're here and that is good and I appreciate the families that were here last night, Testermans and Lisa Arcantor, to make sure that the decorations begin to be put up well and nicely. It's a big church takes a lot of time and it just doesn't happen like that and it's good for you in the pews and those watching from home or on vacation or in the hospitals that when you come to mass it just doesn't happen it takes a lot of prayer and a lot of work by a lot of people especially for Christmas and Easter so I am so grateful as the pastor with our deacons and seminarian to thank everyone who will do so much to make this church beautiful for Christmas. It's a long endeavor, but together we can do it. We pray God will welcome hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people who will come to this church on Christmas Eve and, and Christmas morning. You are indeed all welcomed and be great to sing all these Christmas carols with everyone. Today is obviously not a Sunday, 
um, but it is a day that you're sitting in church. And so I do thank you for that. It is a holy day of obligation when Catholics are supposed to be in church at the vigil or tomorrow in the morning or if there's mass in the evening. Now pray God we'd want to be here even if it wasn't a holy day of obligation. Hopefully we would want to come to this church as many times as we can to celebrate the Eucharist, the mysteries of our faith, and to honor our spiritual mother. To the three young people in the middle of the church, the fourth commandment is to honor thy father and thy mother, and we as Catholics honor our spiritual mother, often and always and uniquely five times a year. And so this is a holy day of obligation, and I've said this now for the third time, because this is the third holy day that we have celebrated um, together. And so we have two more to go. There are only five holy days of obligation, just five, when the church asked us to be here other than Sunday. That's not a lot when you think about 365 days. The church asked us to gather, and so we have tonight. The five holy days of obligation for the third time are these. We'll go from a calendar year, January 1st, the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. It's about Mary. We've got to wait all the way to August 15th, and that's where we started our Holy Days together. The Assumption about Mary. Then we go to All Saints Day. The greatest saint is Mary. We come to today, the Immaculate Conception. It's Mary. The fifth Holy Day of Obligation is Christmas. And yes, about Jesus, but without Mary's yes, you'd all be at Walmart right now shopping. But because of her, yes, here we are sitting in church. Five days, five days of obligation in one way or other, they all center around Mary. That's why we're here to honor our spiritual mother. When we honor Mary, we give glory and adoration to God. And that's what we do as Catholics. So to make sure we got the right celebration and the right feast day, it's obviously not Christmas, and it's obviously not a day we're celebrating when the angel spoke to Mary, and Mary conceived Jesus. But that's another day. That's called the Annunciation. That's not why we're here tonight. We're honoring Mary under the Immaculate Conception, not under the Annunciation. So the angel declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. That's not what we're reflecting upon tonight. When you look at the Annunciation, which is March 25th to Christmas, December 25th, exactly nine months, the church knows its biology. But what we're here tonight to honor is Mary and to look at her parents. Tradition gives us the name of Anne as her mother, and Anne is in that window to the left of Mary, which we cannot see in the evening. So Anne and Joachim are the parents of Mary. They conceived a child. They conceived Mary. Anne bore Mary in her womb. And our church teaches us from the moment of that conception of Mary inside the womb of her mother Anne, from the moment of that conception, it was immaculate, it was holy, it was pure. The child conceived to be carried, to be born, to grow up, to bear Jesus, and to end her earthly existence, to be assumed into heaven, was free from original sin, free from sin throughout her life, a unique gift, a unique mystery. The gospel reading said, with all things, with God, all things are possible. So we're not here to do the mathematics. We're here to enter into a mystery that God blessed Mary from the moment of her conception in the womb of her mother Anne to be pure and holy, undefiled, spotless, beautiful a gift given uniquely to her, and that is what we honor. And in that gift to her, she now 
reigns in heaven as our queen, as our mother. She is there with the unique gift given to her. But I have to say, God has also blessed us with unique gifts and blessings as well. Maybe not immaculately conceived, but God works in us as well. He does not just work through Mary, but he also works through us. And we also have the way through a life of holiness, not perfection, but holiness, we too will be where she is. It's not like she's the only one there. The gift given to her, we must recognize our own gifts and the blessings God has given to us. And if we live them out, the same promise is given to be with God in heaven. Doesn't matter what road we take, it's a matter that we live out our life in Christ and we will be there. And that is indeed also what we celebrate tonight where she is and the blessings she has is also open to each and every one of us to live with God in heaven. Never forget that and never despair that that cannot happen because with God it is all possible. It's even possible for me to get into heaven. That is a gift and that indeed is a miracle. And so the Immaculate Conception, where does that come from? It's a long tradition. It's organic, it's innate that Mary was part of the Christian journey from the beginning. But if you wanted a date, if you want to pick a date of when it was proclaimed officially, it's not that long ago. It was proclaimed by Pius IX in 1854. That is not that long ago. A doctrine declared and to be held by all the faithful. Again, not to figure it out, to let it be a mystery and just to live it, that God could do that for her. And so in 1854, it was proclaimed universally and just four years later, in 1858, Mary appeared to a teenage girl, not much older than that young girl sitting in the pew right there. Mary appeared to her and she said in that vision to her, I am the Immaculate Conception, confirming not only Bernadette, but the faith of all Christians, that what we believe is true. That apparition happened in, in Lourdes and in France, and France is a long plane ride away, but that image of Mary and Bernadette is right here on our beautiful three city blocks. And I've been testing you recently about the beauty of this church, because sometimes we come in here and don't really acknowledge or look at it. Point to where Mary and Bernadette are enshrined on our three beautiful city blocks. Thank you, Janet, you, you did a good job. It's right outside that wall. There's an image of Our Lady of Lords and a teenage girl kneeling before her, Bernadette. A beautiful shrine dedicated to one of the deepest and most beautiful mysteries of our Catholic faith. I ask you to visit that. If not in the darkness of tonight, then when you come on Sunday morning, there is so much here that is rich in our church history. And I pray, God, we will celebrate it and we will use it and take advantage of it um, often. And so with God, everything is possible. Mary has been blessed and we are blessed. And that is why we're here tonight, to honor her and to thank God for every single gift that he gives us and continues to give us with every breath that we take. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers to God. For bishops, priests, and religious, may God strengthen them in faith and bless their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, may God strengthen them in serving with integrity and protecting all life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who lack adequate shelter, may the Lord in his great mercy grant them all their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in holiness during this holy season of preparation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may Jesus welcome them into his heavenly kingdom to rejoice forever with our blessed mother and all the saints and angels, especially Mary Connor, for whom this holy mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all of us, Holy Church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary and grant that as we profess her on account of her prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother of your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, with Peter and Paul, Andrew and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, with Elizabeth and Benedict, Scholastica, the grandparents of Jesus, and Joachim and Jacob, and John Paul II, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Please join in singing number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39.
us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered here this night carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in singing number 697, Sing of Mary, number 697. Thank you. 